She's sponsored by a gold trader. <laughs> Hello everyone. I hope you you're doing well this. today. There's I love it. It's always gold traders. It's always gold grifting. Always. It's so, they're so vulnerable to it. It's about a 99% chance this video will be demonetized considering I want to discuss the C word. And no, not Australia's favorite C word. The other much much worse one that I would pay very good money to never hear again in my life. Unless it is at a bar. Oh, tacky, tacky. Oh, 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 listen, <laughs> listen, I'm going to need a beer to deal with that one. <coughs> Ew, get this swell away from me. Bring me the champagne. Cheers. The good old woo flu, the big Rona, the Kung Pao sicken, the what? Can I hear this again? Can we catch that one again? Wu flu, the big Rona, the Kung Pao sicken, the Kung Fluenza, the Koof, that has imprisoned us all in our own homes for over a, what, what is it? Year and a half? Unless you're rich, of course. Or Lauren Southern, who definitely has not been imprisoned in her home for over a year. Come on, shut the fuck up, you idiot. Nobody buys your dumb ass fucking staying at home. We know you were running around without your fucking mask on, you stupid cringer. Then it is just a regular Tuesday. But before I get into why we need to start eating the rich, I'm just joking. I love you guys. I'm just incredibly jealous. I'm fucking cringing. I'm fucking cringing. Let me get to our sponsor. Another sponsor, Lauren? How, how does she keep getting away with it? That's right. Who else is going to fund my on-the-ground investigative adventure this month? And also, your future. Because quite frankly, the world is a disaster right now. Going to hell in a handbasket. The inflation rate in the U.S. has just soared to a 29-year high. You heard that right. It hasn't been this bad since 1992. Before I was even born. Invest in gold! I pan this gold myself in the Yukon! Huge problem for all of us with food and gas prices soaring, and it is definitely terrible if you plan on retiring anytime soon. But there are absolutely options to ensure the value of your savings are not wiped out, like backing your money. Wait. They don't even give you the gold? At Noble Gold Investments, we take the security of your metals extremely seriously. We store your precious metals in a registered secure depository facility. They just actually, they just, they just tell you you're getting gold and you don't ever actually see it and they just store it in their facility. Oh my god. This, this could be straight up a grift. Okay, just so you know. Someday on stream, I want to do a chill stream where we watch um, Chud Logic's The Great British Coin Grift, which is an amazing series that Chud Logic did about about how uh, British coin companies are just like ripping off hundreds of thousands of old people for tons and tons of money. This, I guarantee you, this is one of those. Oh, it's so good, Windleby buy something tangible. Noble Gold specializes in retirement planning and IRAs. They're also there if you're we just looking that. to diversify. Fun. I love crypto, but I also have gold because it's really good to have solid value you can Wait! hold in your hand. Wait a minute. This is literally it. Hold on. Can we look at this website, please? Noble Gold. Oh my God, hold on. Wait a minute. This is literally... Oh, no! This is the same... This is! This is the same thing! This is the same shit that Chud talked about! It is! It's gold coins! It's not actual gold bullion! This is gold coin grift! It's literally the thing that Chud was talking about! This... Okay, this shit is... We should watch it. Should we watch it? 
Should we watch it? Okay, it's way more interesting than anything Lauren Southern can say. It's actually so good. Should we watch it? Hold on, let's vote. If chat's gonna stick around for it, we'll watch it. It's so good. The Great British Coin Scam, part one. Okay, this is like an hour long series, so we're gonna have a really fun time, okay? This is gonna be really fun, okay? I fucking love Chud, and this, you guys are gonna lose your minds at how much of a grift this shit is. This shit is a serious grift, okay? Like, it's bad, okay? Oh. Okay, let's do it. Let's do this. This is gonna be so much fun. Oh, I'm Hello so excited. and welcome to future YouTube viewers to this video. We know that voice. Which... That's Chud Logic. That's fucking Chud Logic. Chud Logic. Chudlow Garfimp. Can we get some Chudlow Garfimps in chat? Here we go. I will be going over and exposing one of the YouTube. worst examples of the predatory nature of capitalism that I've ever experienced in my life. Okay? So we're going to be going into it and we're going to be getting into the details. So just a bit of background for you. A couple of years ago, I worked for it a probably is for collectible time. coin company. Now, I'll go into the details of how it worked and how it operated. But it, the simplest way that I can put it is this. This company would essentially sell coins to people, mainly old people. And that's it. Okay, that's the simplest way that I can think of describing it. However, the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, this is an absolutely enormous grift and a scam and a sham. And I'm going to be getting into it and I'm going to be going over it. Get ready, it, okay? chat. This is going to be now, so just good. Just to face this, I want to say, this isn't me giving you advice about whether to buy gold or silver or not. Okay. I'm not equipped to understand what your needs are as to whether you would need to purchase that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm not here to tell you to buy to buy anything. This isn't about telling you to buy gold or crypto or anything like that. Forget all that, okay? This is simply a segment in which I plan to hopefully very clearly lay out the nature of the business, how it works, how it makes money, and why it's a grift, okay? Yeah, okay, so this, Chuds, this video is really super good. And Chad is going to method methodically describe to you how all of this is achieved, okay? So buckle in, because you're about to have your mind fucking blown. And do you want to know how Chad knows this? Because Chad worked in the fucking industry for a long time. So let's get, let's, let's, let's enjoy this. I'm telling you, you're, gonna, you're not going to regret it. It's fucking good. I wanted to make that clear, because we'll be going over some stuff about gold and how the gold buying and selling works. I just didn't want anyone to think it was any form of advice, okay? Um, so that's that's the first point. Um, the second point is um, it's been a couple of years since I left the company. Um, they they fired me essentially. Um, basically, I wasn't I wasn't performing. I, I'll get into I'll get into the detail of this, but I was struggling to perform with the targets they were were setting. Chad um, Cam and and I'll go into that a bit later. Okay, I'm but I, I got fired basically. Um, I have spoken about this on the stream before, but I wanted to uh, I wanted to go through it again. And really nail down on the details. Oh, uh, as a as a as a thing, before anybody thinks that that's like actually an indictment of your uh, of your sales skill, uh, most salespeople end their career by getting fired. There comes to a point in any sales career where most of the time you burn out so hard that you can't keep up with your previous numbers, and then they fire you for fresh for fresh blood. That's just sales. I worked in sales for five years, and I left before I got to that point. But lot, ton, so many people work until the day they burn out and then they fire you. That's just how sales is. You get fired. Like, sales is, is a cutthroat industry. It is truly a cutthroat industry. There are companies that just every single quarter fire the bottom 10%, the bottom 15% of their staff. Even if those people in the bottom 15% are making them money, they'll still fire them. Just because they're not doing good enough. It's fucked. It is the most fucked industry in the world. People can understand how bad it is. Does that impact your career in getting other sales jobs afterwards? Yes. You will not get another sales job after you finally leave sales. Most people don't go back into sales after leaving sales. You're done. You're just 
it for, first of all nobody wants to nobody wants to go back into sales after getting out of sales most of the time but also like you can't they know that once you've passed your prime like sales is an industry that is fueled on cocaine i mean that like i like seriously the amount of drugs that are being consumed in any sales industry is absolutely ridiculous yeah car dealerships are like some of the worst car dealerships are just basically anytime you go into a car dealership there is like an 80 percent chance that in the back room there are people snorting cocaine before they come out to talk to you i'm just telling you that's just holy fuck it is um, so before before we get into um, the details and before I kind of lay out uh, what you know the details of the scam and how it works and so on, what I need to do is give you an extremely um, quick education, okay? Like a oh, very very so quick exciting. education on on how gold works. So what I mean by that... Session says, My friend who works in another division says that the entirety of Dell refers to sales as the place careers go to die. It's fucking ridiculous. It's not the place where careers go to die. It's where people's mental health goes to die. I'm not kidding you. Sales ruins people. It is the most cutthroat and fucking disgusting industry you can imagine. Have you seen the movie Sorry to Bother You? Yes. Yes. That movie spoke to me on a level I can't even believe. You were a car salesman. I was number one for years. Literally one month of not being the best salesman due to a medical issues, they fired me. Yeah. True, there are horse dogs in that movie. That's true. Let's continue. Is running you through Damn. how I'm the glad buying you're out of and there, selling I'm of glad gold you're out works. Of there, okay? Because this is, this is a fundamental thing you need to understand in order for me to then explain about the coins. Okay? So, how does gold work? So... With any commodity like gold, silver, platinum, whatever it is, okay? There's a few things you need to understand. Now, the first thing you need to understand is what is the spot price of gold? So the spot price of gold is the current live value of gold. So the, and, and that's influenced by like a whole host of things, okay? I'm not like an economist or a commodities expert so I wouldn't be able to tell you um, exactly exactly what goes into that. But in any case, it's the current live value of gold. So at the moment, one ounce of gold, the spot price for that, yeah, so the value really. of that for one ounce of gold is £1,335.81. Okay? So that's the current value of gold. Now... How does the buying and selling of physical gold work? So gold is formed into, obviously they mine the gold wherever they mine it. And then gold is formed into different forms. So you get like bars of gold. If anyone's seen like a Hollywood film where they have a heist, you know, and they go into the bank and they get all the bars of gold. That's, that's like a bar of gold you can have. And that ranges in weight. So you can get ones that are like, grams all the way through to ones that are kilograms and, and higher once again yeah so you can get different sizes now for a number of reasons one popular way of owning and, st and storing commodities including gold is to buy a coin right so you buy like a different type of coin that's made of gold and there's a number of different types of gold coins that are available that are made in mints around the world so in the UK the most popular probably i mean there's there's different types even within the uk but one of the most famous prominent and popular types of gold coin from the uk is the um the sovereign right and the sovereign has got a very rich history um dating back hundreds of years we don't need to we don't need to go into the exact details of like the history and stuff but it's got a very fang gz says does dm have a video talking about her sale jo her sales jobs experiences actually i do it's in a vod i don't have a, a an edited video about it i did a mama story time where i told about one of the um one of the scams that was going on in my industry the truck scam um i'll do it again in the future and i'll make that into an actual video uh somebody somebody in the in the uh community might know which vod that's from i don't remember which vod it was from off the top of my head but somebody might know let's continue rich history which is why it tends to be quite popular okay 
Now, um, another, and, and, you know, across the world, you've got like the Krugerrand from South Africa. You've got the American Eagle, the Canadian Maple Leaf. You know, there's a number of different um, gold coins from around the world that are very popular. And all of them have got a history that you can go and look into and explore in more detail if you want to, okay? Um, but the key point here is about how the buying and selling of these coins work, okay? So, you see here, current price of gold was changed actually just then. Look, the current price is £1,335.02, okay? So if that's the spot price of gold, how do companies like this, bullion by post, so they're buying and selling coins all the time, how do they make their money? Well, it's really quite simple. So let's look at a coin here. So if we look at, for example, um, wait a sec. If we look at a one ounce gold Britannia, okay? To keep it simple, right? So if you're looking at a one ounce go. gold Britannia, if you wanted to buy a one ounce gold Britannia, bearing in mind the current price of gold is £1,335.70, this bullion dealer will sell you one of these coins for £1,421, right? And the more, the more that you buy, the lower price it becomes, yeah? But even if you even if you were to buy a thousand of these, you're still paying one thousand four hundred and three pounds. This video is from December fourth of twenty twenty. So obviously this isn't an exact science, but if you were to do the maths on that, okay. So if you were to get your calculator up, and you were to take um, one four zero three, and you were to minus hey, off one three three five, that gives you sixty eight pound times a thousand. So even if you were to like buy a thousand coins, Optimus Prime says, "How many coffee, tea, energy drinks, or exercise routines does Demon Mama have before stream?" Before stream today, I woke up. I woke up about an hour before stream after taking a thirty-minute nap, and then I drank a uh, diet coke, and then I got on stream. <laughs> that I even, I forgot my medication this morning too, so I don't even have that going for me. <laughs> the company would essentially make you know give or take obviously their overheads and whatever but but in terms of the money they make it would be six thousand eight hundred pounds right obviously obviously more if they purchase these coins at a lower price previously because the price of gold goes up and down yeah so what if you're selling one of these coins so if you're selling a gold coin a one ounce britannia yeah they'll give you £1,282.25. Ah. So these buying and selling... Look at that. Interesting, huh? So you buy at more than the going rate for raw gold and you sell at significant... at like 100 less than the going rate of gold. You see how it's starting to tick together here? Watch, it gets worse. Prices, right? These buying and selling prices... Um, are kind of within within a reasonable boundary of what the current price of gold is. But just a couple of years ago, an ounce of gold was only worth about a thousand pound. So so you would have been you would have been selling your your um coins, your your one ounce Britannias to this bullion dealer for about nine hundred and eighty, nine hundred and sixty quid, right? So they're making even more money on coins that they've purchased previously and they've benefited from the price of gold going up, yeah? So hopefully this is making sense so far. Hopefully this is all making sense. Really simple. The idea with gold is you buy it for the lowest price you can and you sell it for the highest price you can, right? And some people will purchase gold um, it's like as a speculative purchase with the hope that the value will increase over time, yeah? Pretty simple stuff. Pretty straightforward investment type stuff, right? So that's just that's what is known as bullion coins or bullion gold. So you're basically trading the gold based on the intrinsic value in the metal. By intrinsic value, obviously, what I mean is the value that society places on gold, right? Because obviously, it doesn't really have any intrinsic value except the value that we as a society put on it. But moving away from like the lefty type thought processes, it was called the intrinsic value, yeah? So. That's gold, that's gold coins. Now, 
Further to that, you have something called numismatics. Okay? What does numismatics means mean? So numismatics is essentially the study and collection of currency. It's basically the hobby of collecting coins, right? So some people will buy coins, not because of the intrinsic value or anything like that. They'll buy coins because they just like collecting coins. They're just a collector, Mm -hmm. yeah? And that's what numismatics is all about. Now, some people that are into numismatics aren't interested in the value. They aren't interested in the price going up or anything like that. They just buy it because they like it. However, in some cases, certain coins that have got um, a rarity factor, right? Some coins that have got a rarity factor, it can have a significant impact on the value of that coin, okay? So um, basically when it comes to this, it's a combination of um, rarity and desirability, right? Because at the end of the day with any of this stuff, a, a coin or anything is only going to be worth as much as someone is willing to pay for it okay so let me show you an example of this quickly so this is the 1933 double eagle okay this is a this is um does do people here know what double eagle is gonna get really wild chat see this right now at first this seems like okay so they sell it for they sell it for a profit and they buy it they buy it at favorable conditions and then they sell it okay that seems pretty normal right just wait it's about to get fucking hog wild this is part one of five it's about to get fucking wild (laughs) coin toss it transnational how's it going Okay. (laughs) Well, listen, we don't need to go into the details, okay? Here's the key information that you need to know. Here's the key information that you need to know, okay? This is an approximate one ounce gold coin, okay? So, in theory, this is a one ounce gold coin. Therefore, it should be worth whatever the price of gold is that it's it's sold at, right? So about 1,300 pound, yeah? Technically, it's a gold coin, it should be worth that. However, for a number of reasons, which goes into quite a lot of history, okay, there were th- these coins were melted down. So you can see here, there were 445,000 of these coins made, okay? Right? But a lot of them were melted down. Now, that's because, um, basically, in the 1930s in America, they removed the gold standard and moved to a fiat currency system to put it simply so much of the gold was collected and and much of it was melted down as well so a lot of these coins ended up being melted and they were no longer okay all but two were were melted down 20 were rescued from the melting and they were stolen and found their way online and stuff like that so bear in mind this coin is one ounce okay it's gold worth is about 1,300 pound as of today however in 2002, a um, private collector paid $7.59 million for this coin, which has got gold in it that today is worth about $1,700, say. Yeah? $7.59 million. <clears throat> so... But this is this is the thing, Scribble. For, for like a collector, the historical significance and relevance of this coin is enormous. Yeah, I won't bore you with the details because it is kind of dull if you're not into coins. But there's a lot of history that means that a top end collector would be wanting to pay this kind of money for this coin. Yeah. So this is like owning a piece of history. This is the equivalent of buying like the Mona Lisa or something like that, but for coins. Right. That's the concept and the idea behind it. And what's even more incredible is this is a gold coin, and I want to focus on gold because it's easier to make it all rel- relative. But there's even like silver coins and some coins that aren't even a precious metal because of the rarity of them. They are- <laughs> AD5D2D Derek says, gold idiots were the original Bitcoin idiots. True! True! 
worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. Really interesting if you're into it, but I don't want to delve too much into it, okay? The rarer or more collectible something is, the higher the value. That, listen, that is more, you're more or less there, but it's about how desirable it is as well, which we'll get into, because this is all, the, all of this is important. True this is all essential rest. information that you have to know in order to really understand what I'm going to talk about, okay? Dreadle, now, dreadle, dreadle. Um, further to that, more, this is a more, more kind of recent development over the past 40 or 50 years that this has become more of a sort of prominent thing in the coin collecting scene. There's something called proof coins that have become quite popular. Uh oh. So let's just go into that quickly, okay? So this just goes into the details here. The Royal uh -oh. Mint strikes coins to three different standards for investors and collectors, okay? So proof coins are essentially high quality commemorative. So basically, every coin we've been talking about so far are what are known as bullion coins. So bullion coins, the focus is primarily on mass production of the coin. They want to have the ability to strike or to make thousands of these in the course of a few minutes, okay? So they literally just rattle them off. It's like bang, 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 bang. They go through the machine, all collect up, okay? So the focus isn't so much on the quality of the minting of the coin. It's about mass producing them, yeah? So producing them as quickly as possible to, to you know, yeah? So look, 250 gold and 3,000 silver coins per hour. Yeah. And then there's brilliant uncirculated, which we're not going to go into too much, but that's a little like a step above bullion. But what I was talking about is this. So proof coins. Okay. So proof coins are commemorative coins. So they're minted and made to a much higher standard. Like a much higher standard than a regular bullion coin, okay? You can see the difference if you compare the two side by side. Let me see if I can actually just find a quick picture of it to show you. Oh, cool. So, I didn't bullion know that versus proof. Look, here we go. So those are the different qualities. That's proof here. So bully, so proof, you have like this kind of frosting on the design. And that's just the standard bullion one. That's brilliant uncirculated, but bullion and proof, okay? So that basically it looks a lot shinier, okay? It looks, it looks a lot shinier, first of all. That's the first point to mention. Now, with proof, not only do they focus on higher quality, but proof coins are minted in much lower numbers. Proof coins used to be the coin that the mint made initially as like a proof of concept for the coin. So they would base their designs on that, to put it really simply, yeah? But now, mints will make a small number of proof coins. Sh it's shiny! That means it must be worth something. Okay. In order to sell them as a collectible item, right? As Chud would say, I'm here for the meme and cream. Hey, only facts. Did you know that was me that invented that? Did you know I invented the term meme and cream and it was Chud who picked it up from me? One of the few things. Chud Logic is often credited with being the main supporter of this channel. The true deal. But I was the one who invented the meme and cream originally. So, broadly speaking, how it tends to go is pe people that are buying bullion coins Chud and I are doing it back. for the raw investment potential of the gold metal value yeah and it's supposed to be okay people that buy proof coins right are doing so as a collectible and that's it only as a collectible okay oh shit 30 now that's awesome that's the background that's the groundwork set for how all of this works so now that you understand that you're going to be able to understand everything else that I talk about now. If there's any questions or you're not sure about anything, please feel free to ask in chat and I'll do my best to answer any questions you've got, okay? Part two, on we go. Versus Let's move on to the coin company grift. Now here's the thing. There's 
Anarcho num- Cat Girl says, just got here. Are we looking at shiny coins? We are watching through a amazing little series that was done by my uh, beloved colleague, Chud Logic, about the British coin scam. And the reason we're watching the British coin scam is because we were watching a Lauren Southern video and Lauren Southern was hawking the exact same types of coins that Chud talks about in this video. And in fact, it's very, very common for um, for uh, conservatives to hawk coins like this. And we're going to learn about why and how they're a scam. number of different coin companies that operate, it's confusing. I mean, why and how they're allegedly a scam? Because some of them have got different names, but they're owned by the same people, right? And what I don't want to do is kind of go into, oh, this company does this, that company does that, and then like make a mistake and get it wrong or something like that. So what I'm going to do is this. We're going to create today our very own coin company. Okay? Yeah! This so is that's my what we're going to do. Part. I love this We're going to create a brand new coin company. Okay? Shud Logic what Coins. What fonts have we got here? We're going to be called... Okay. No, it's not Chud Coin. No, no, no. I'm gonna no. I'm gonna call it. An, I'm gonna call it a name <laughs> so it sounds like a company that. <laughs> leftist kill. Leftist killbot says my favorite build a grift. True. <laughs> we're getting into the build a grift. Would sell coins, right? So we're gonna be called. Wait a sec. I Westminster love this. Portfolio Coins. Okay. <laughs> now the reason that this this name is important, okay, is. Hello, my name is Chud Logic from Westminster Portfolio Coins, calling you here this Tuesday from YouTube. Because these companies, and I'll list a few, you've got Coin Portfolio Management, Westminster, um, Hattons of London, Harrington and Burn, okay? <laughs> I love the names of these coin companies so much. These companies, these companies will call themselves things. And a lot of this, you need to bear in mind, okay, a lot of this is boomer bait. So they will call themselves things that they know that boomers are going to be like, ooh, ooh, Westminster Portfolio Coins, how very, very nice, Uh, right? So they they call themselves things that (laughs) boomers are like, ooh. I can't. I can't. I, I love it. I'm sorry. That just made me laugh so hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you get it? <laughs> can I change that? Oh, yeah, I can. There we go. Chuddle, yeah, Chuddle Smiths and Sons. <laughs> wait, I'm trying to find like a... Uh, I'm trying to find like a good... God, these... Wait, what's this? No, that's no good. <laughs> I'm trying to find like a, uh, like a, a, a font that looks kind of like... Uh, no, that's no good either. God, these fonts are terrible. Okay, that'll do. So we're going to be called Westminster Portfolio Coins, okay? In fact, let's make it like... There we go. So we're called Westminster Portfolio Coins, okay? <laughs> this isn't exactly how I'd want it, but it'll do. It'll do. Comic Sans. Comic Sans. I know, I need to get a new thing. But there's more. We're going to be called Westminster Portfolio Coins of I'm London. Not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not joking. This is the kind of stuff they call themselves. 100%. Okay? I'm, not, I'm not messing about. You'll see in a sec. <laughs> You'll see in a sec, okay? <laughs> this is the kind of stuff they call themselves. Okay, it's not quite what I wanted, but... <laughs> That'll do, okay? Of That's London. close enough. That's clo- close enough. <laughs> <sighs> okay, right. Let's uh, let's increase the size of this bad boy. Let's let's whiff let's whiff this up. Fifteen hundred by a thousand. Let's go. Uh-oh, it's getting oh, it's no, hang on. getting advanced. That wasn't quite what I wanted. Can I can I just crop that out? There we go. Okay, so Westminster Portfolio Coins of London. Okay, yeah, of London, of England, of Great Britain. I mean, we we could um, we could we, we could go on forever with this. Okay, we could, we could get really silly with it. But for now, West, Westminster Portfolio Coins of London. Okay, <laughs> so what you need to understand 
is that these so th this is the drift okay? <laughs> There's three different. I love this. I love this moment. Gay fish. <laughs> Americans don't know that West Westminster isn't in London. Ten seconds later. Oh wait, it actually is in London. Never mind. Strands <laughs> of grift that's engaged in with these companies. Okay, some of them engage. Most of them engage in all of it. Some of them only engage in some of it. Okay, but it's all True, really it bad. And another thing to note as well is that. There are some reputable coin dealers that exist that don't engage in this behavior, right? They're more honest. Yes, they, you pay a premium with them sometimes, but the premiums aren't nearly as much as you see with some of these companies, which we'll get into. And they're far more honest and they've got a passion for actual True coin collecting roads. and numismatics. True okay? roads. So this isn't an indictment of every single coin company that exists. But there are specific ones which have got names that sound very similar to this. John Oliver for POTUS says, How many coffee, tea, energy drinks, exercise routines do you have before stream? I want your energy so bad. Wait, I got asked that earlier. Uh, I don't really do I don't really do any of that. Uh, I have I usually I mean, I usually do drink I mean I drink a lot of Diet Coke, but that's about it. Uh, I drink Diet Coke. Um uh, I try to get lots of sleep. Um and I smoke a lot of weed after I'm done streaming. That is usually what gives me the energy. And I have ADHD, like severely. Like, uh. Yeah. Okay. That definitely do engage in at least one of these behaviors, which we'll go into, okay? So, what is the first strand of grift? Okay, here we go. Oh, the police are coming. Big coin. Big coin are onto me, people. <laughs> Big coin are coming to crack down on me. Big coin. Okay, so the first grift we've got is what I call... Oh, God, the text is all stupid now as well. <laughs> Let me change it to like Ariel or something just basic. Okay, there we go. So we've got the official proof. Oh, God. I need to get another system. This is rubbish. Proof coin grift, okay? No, that's no good. That's... This isn't... <laughs> this isn't working how I'd hoped. Okay, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Okay, let's, let's try again. So we've got the official proof coin grift, okay? And also, one other thing I want to make clear as well is like... This is the tip of the iceberg. There's other, and all of them follow a similar theme. There's other things as well that I could show you, but I just won't have time to show you everything. But yeah, maybe at the end I'll show you as a little treat for the stream, okay? So the first thing we've got is the official proof coin grift. Now what I mean by official proof coin is when I say like an official proof coin, I'm, I'm kind of speaking in, in like simplicity. What I mean is a coin that's been released like a like a, by the by like a mint. So there's certain mints around the world that have got quite a lot of prestige and renown, and they're like bullion coins are genuinely uh, attractive to people uh -huh, on the whole, yes, right? Indeed. So you've got like the South African mint, you've got the Australian mint, the American mint, the Canadian mint. I can't remember the exact names of them. And then in the UK, you've got the Royal Mint. Okay. So let me show you this. So here's, here's what happens. Here's how it works, okay? Here's how it works. So every year, the Royal Mint will release um, a sovereign. And they release other coins, but we're going to focus on the sovereign for the purposes of this, okay? So every year, they release a, um, a gold bullion sovereign, as I talked about earlier. And as well as that, they relief, release a proof version of the coin okay hey oh my god supreme thanks so much for the raid really appreciate it hope you're good that's amazing thank you so much really appreciate it okay so every year welcome raiders welcome 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 so every year um they will release here we go this is it 
So this is this is, the, the the next year's edition of the coin isn't out yet, but I'll use it as a comparison just to give you a bit of insight. Okay, so it's not an exact like for like comparison. It's different years of coins, but it gives you an idea. Okay, so you can currently purchase um, the sovereign, the 2020 gold bullion sovereign, for 339 pounds 63 pence. Okay, so that's the value of the gold plus like a bit of a premium on top. Okay, so that's for like the minting of the coin, for the fact that they're packaging it, send it to you, all that stuff, right? But that's essentially, a, you know, you might get a cheaper deal at other dealers, but more or less, that's the kind of similar price to what you're going to pay for the coin. Yeah, you with me so far? So you're, you're more or less paying as pretty much as you, know, you can get it closer, but pretty close to what the value of the gold in it is with a bit of a premium on top. So the Royal Mint can make their money on it and so on, right? So what the Royal Mint will also do, and bear in mind, this is for next year because they released the Proof Sovereign a few months early, okay? So what, what you've got here, let me find it quickly. So if we go to Sovereign, okay? So you can currently purchase, and bear in mind how much the Bullion Sovereign was, right? You can currently purchase the um, 2021 Sovereign, so that's next year's. There's only 7,995 that have been made. And you can purchase that from the Raw Mint directly for £580, okay? So, as you can see, that's a premium on top of just the gold value. And the theory is what you're paying for is the extra quality, the fact it's limited edition and so on, okay? Now, if you're a collector and you want to buy a proof coin because it looks nice and you want to add it to a collection that you've got, Fair enough, yeah? That's your decision to do so. As long as you understand it, you're paying a premium, it's not just the value of the gold, you're paying above and beyond what the actual gold is worth, okay? But as a collectible item, if you like that kind of thing, if that's up your street, fair enough, okay? That's your that's your right as a consumer. I, I love this. This coin is respected all over the world and safeguarded by law. <laughs> what the fuck? Uma as a consumer to go and do that, okay? Now, this is the raw mint. So this is just like a, a mint that makes the coins, right? They're just trying to make money on their operation, yeah? Looks like waste. Some people would see that, that's fair enough. Look, I wouldn't go and spend money on a proof gold coin. Some people do, you know, some people spend a lot of money on coins, right? But just to be clear as well, and I want to make this clear now before I go into it later. I'm a cum shroomer. <laughs> later, don't think that the people that we're talking about are all mega rich, like super millionaires or whatever. And well, so we wait, shouldn't. Wait, wait, hold on. One quick second, though. Uh, it, Jack Nicholson says, I mean, I've spent stupid amounts on magic cards and silver gold jewelry, jewelry, but I know it's stupid. It's not stupid if you're getting enjoyment out of it. If you like having something cool on your. I mean, look, look. I mean, oh, you can't see my backdrop, but like, look at this. Like, I have like a little silly plastic toy of Maggie from Binding of Isaac here, as you can see, and that's fucking awesome. And I paid more than I probably should have. This thing is probably like one dollar of plastic, and you know, some art skill gone into it. I paid for it, but that's because I love it, and it makes me happy to see on my backdrop all the time. So if you like it, it's great. But the, you're, we're gonna get into how this becomes a grift as it goes on but you have to understand the basics for you to understand the grift care about them getting taken advantage of okay the vast majority of people that i engaged with were working class old people working class boomers okay Here we go who had existed their whole life struggled and strived under capitalism have managed to get a bit of money set aside when they're like 60 70 80 and they're looking for somewhere to put it to keep it safe okay and they've maybe got like a grand, two grand, which sounds like a lot of money. But imagine if you've lived for 60, 70, 80 years and you've got two grand to show for it at the end. Like, and, and even if you've got five grand or 10 grand, it's not, it's not like an enormous amount of money considering you spent your whole life saving for it. So it's very, very important that you understand that the people that I was dealing with and the primary customers of these businesses are not mega rich millionaires. Most of them are working class, and you'll see with some of the payment plans how people get targeted, right? Make sense? You with me? Cool. So, where do the coin companies come in? So we've looked at the official mint. They've got the bullion coin and they've got the proof coin. Okay? Where do the coin... Hey, hey, 
Violet the Purple Square. Watch this. Ready? I'm going to show you a magic trick. Are you ready? Everybody, keep an eye on what's about to happen in YouTube chat right now. Watch this. Ready? I'm about to do it here. Ready? Watch this. Hey, Violet the Purple Square. Watch this. Ready? Here we go. You can see everybody. Get ready. Bam! Time out. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You want to know what? If you're not enjoying the show, go watch something else. Suck my cock. And you know what? Suck Chud's cock too. Fuck you. We're enjoying the show and enjoying the laughter and the memes and the hangout. So fuck you. Hope you enjoy your time out. Companies come in. Well, to demonstrate this, to demonstrate this, allow me to just show you something quickly, okay? Allow me to show you something quickly. So... <laughs> yeah, of course you can, Clay Soldier, of course. Brian C84, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Oh, really actually, sorry, that. there's one thank more you. thing I want to note as well. There's one more thing I want to note, sorry. What did they say? They were complaining that Chud was taking too long to explain it. And so I said, then go watch it on your own. Go make your own fucking video. So... Oh, yeah, hold on. What the Vormint have done, and this has caused quite a lot of I frustration know, amongst collectors, okay? Oh, no, the Royal Mint is a, is a private company. It's not actually the government as such. It's a private company. Thank you. Listen, what the Mints have started doing on some occasions, and the Royal Mint in particular is really bad at this, is on the proof coins in the last couple of years, they've started to add what's called a mint mark. So it's basically this little mark here. Okay. By the 2021, it's like a little crown. And it's and what they do is they essentially they just cut. They think true. every they year. Oh, what can we commemorate this year? Oh, it's it's the Queen's ninety. <laughs> I love this. Uh, yeah, let's come up with the Queen's ninety fifth birthday. Fifth birthday. Stick stick a fucking crown on the coin. Make it a bit more special, right? And it wasn't always the way. They used to commemorate every five years or ten years. There'd be something that comes up that they commemorated. But now with the sovereign, they're doing it every year. They're just finding any old shit. To stick on the coin. Oh, it's, it's, wait a sec. It's the Queen's dog's um, owner's second, third, cousin's anniversary birthday thing. Okay, yeah, just, I don't know. Stick a fucking paw print on the coin. Just stick something on it, okay? To fuck it. I, I don't know. Whatever you want. So the Mint has started to do this, right? And this becomes important too. Now, where do the coin companies come into all this? <laughs> oh, no. Jack Nicholson says, you laugh, but the first annual commemorative coin of the death of Epstein will sell like hotcakes. <laughs> okay, guys, you do realize. <laughs> okay, we laugh about this, but you do realize that coin scams were a huge part of QAnon, right? And the Trump thing, you know, the Trump coin was a real thing. Like there were a lot of Trump coins, right? Like, it's it's funny to laugh at, but at the same time, this is a real. Go look it up. Go look up the Trump coins. Go look up the Q and the Patriot coins. One hundred percent. One. I'm not kidding you. No, oh, yeah, there's like Trumpy Bear. There's a million of them. The Iraqi Dinars. Yes, the ch yes Chapo's one of Chapo's best segments of all time. The Iraqi Dinars. The Dinar scam. Holy shit! The Dinar scam is so good. Oh, that's like a short segment. Maybe after this, we'll watch that. Maybe that'll be what we... Maybe we'll listen to that while we play some uh, some uh, Stardew. Because that is so funny. They they put that up on YouTube so we could watch it. Because they put that segment up on YouTube and it's actually fucking golden. Oh my god. Yeah, we'll watch that after while we play some Stardew. All right, let's continue with this. I gotta Where go does the grift come Keep in from these other companies? Right Allow me to explain. So this company is called Westminster. This is one of the companies that I'm referencing that does some of these things, and I'll explain to you what ha what's happening here, okay? Wait. I was told to come on over and say funny things. Is this it? A baba booey. Is that it? Yep, this is it. Okay. So, this is the same coin that we were just looking at. So this is the 2021 Gold Proof Sovereign. So on here, um, you'll notice... Know. That it's 580 pounds I'm, I'm but with westminster the coin scam. it's 625 pounds different, different how 
Hmm. It's because I don't have the mouse puppet. That's right. It's a rat. Yeah, boycott. You, you're right. Rat, rat. These names are specifically chosen to make it sound like they're affiliated with the government in some way. It's it's I despicable. Anyway, so you'll see they're charging a bit more for it, which is intriguing. Hmm. Okay. Don't worry. We'll we'll explain that in a little bit. Okay. But let me break this down for you because there's actually quite a lot going on here that you might not notice on the first glance. So let's go over this. Okay. So the first thing to know, and this plays into what I was saying earlier about some of these people being um, kind of desperate, okay? Nothing. You can Nothing pay monthly for this coin. That's worth commemorating. £62.50. I'd commemorate... As the down payment. Uh, and I don't know... My birthday. Yeah, look, nine interest-free payments are £62.50. So you can pay for this coin over ten months. What does that tell you about the kind of customer that they maybe are hoping to hook in with this? Old people with hmm. too much money. Interesting. In their retirement. Intriguing. Right? So that's the first point. <clears throat> right? B T D. So the coin companies over. will offer instalments on it, right? Now, the, se the second aspect you need to understand in terms of this is, is the following. And this, this again, oh, I don't... this again becomes really important as we go on, okay? No. So companies such as Westminster and the other companies, it. and also it, um, our company, don't forget, Westminster see. Portfolio Coins, okay? I don't want to play the other board. Here's what happens. So, you might you might get a bit ahead of me here, but stick with me. So, they will go ahead. Okay. And they will they will purchase large allocations of official no mint problem. coins, yeah? You might see where this is going. Maybe not. Dep depends Depends what your thought process is, but look. So, let's 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 take it one step at a time. So, what they will do is, here. so our company, our company, really Westminster up. Portfolio it's Coins of London, they will approach the mint, and they will say, okay, so we see you've got seven thousand nine hundred and ninety-five um, of these sovereign coins, well, right? I have, I have I'll tell you what we'll do. But we'll purchase we a thousand of these and we'll purchase them for i don't know 400 quid right 400 350 400 quid dependent on the value of gold and stuff like that right so they'll buy a thousand and because they're buying in bulk obviously they've got the purchasing power to get a discount okay Sorry, I need to change the stream title. <laughs> so they've got the purchasing power to say, hey, I'll buy a thousand at 400 pound off you, right? So the company, so Chad our company now, okay, Westminster down, Portfolio Chad. Coins has got 400 of these. I'm sorry, I've got a thousand of these at 400 pound each. So on our website, okay. we go and we say, okay, I wasn't saying Here's what we'll do. either, actually. We'll, we'll charge £600. So it's only £20 more than what the Royal Mint is doing them for. But we offer you the peace of mind of being able to split the payment over 10 months or whatever it is, however long you want to split it over, okay? So that gives you peace of mind. You don't have to pay it all straight away, nice and easy, um, you know, and it's, it's spread out for you, right? So that's one way that you justify the increased really price. Back anyway. Now... I'll come back to that in a second. That becomes important later. But just to sort of touch on, on how how our company... So now, we've purchased all these coins. We've got a 1,000 of these proof sovereigns. We've spent £400 on each of them, okay? Now we need to sell them. I love you. Now we need to sell them. Well, how do we do that? Fawn overthrown again. Re-overthrown. Fawn fans rise up. Oh, I see, I see. I'll tell you exactly how. So what will happen is, this advert's from 2019, or 2017, sorry, but it gives you an insight, gives you an idea, okay? 
So this is Harrington and Burn. This is like a, a company that does this stuff. What they will do is they'll put an advert out in the paper. Yours for any. She's just out of frame. Yeah. She was out of frame. Two hundred and forty-nine pound. So what they're doing is they're advertising, going back to what we spoke about earlier, the bullion version of the coin. So this is the this is the investment version of the coin, right? And this, what this does is it touches on both the investment aspect, so people that want to make an investment, yeah? And further to that, it's also touching on the collectability aspect. So in 2017, there was a special mint mark, not just on the proof coin, but on the normal coin as well. So they manage, they put that all in the advert to sort of pique the interest of the collectible side as well as the investment side, right? So, listen up. Let's, let's say a customer calls in, okay? Mr. Jones. Let's say Mr. Jones picks up the advert in the paper and he sees this, okay? Now, there's lots of different types of customers that call in. Some are calling in for an investment and just want to spend a bunch of money on gold. Other people just want something collectible or something like that, right? But one of one of the um, most kind of common type of customer that would call in, okay, would be someone who's like, say, a granddad. And like I said earlier, they've put a bit of money aside. They've got maybe a grand or two grand or less or more to spend. And they just want to put that aside to pass down to their family, right? So they want to pass it down like an inheritance, that was one of the most common types of customers that you would get, okay? So we're gonna we're gonna think about that type of customer. Chad so used to, the yeah. customer that's called Chad used to work at a coin sales company, yeah. In is Mr. Jones. He wants to he's got a he's got a grand to spend. He's thinking about buying four of these sovereigns and he wants to put them aside as in like a, an inheritance for his kids when he passes away. You're trying okay? to set me up. Now, here's where the salespeople come in and the first real hardcore st stage of the grift comes in, okay? So Mr. Jones calls you up. Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. In fact, he'd call you up or he'd send in this slip. So you'd have a slip with Mr. Jones's number on. So you'd call him up or he'd call you and you say, hello, Mr. Jones. It's, oh, um, no need, Rhodes. it's, it's okay. uh, Don't worry Chud here from, um, what's the name of our company Don't again? Don't worry about it. I'll get it's it. It's Chud worry. here from the Westminster Portfolio Coins of London. I'm calling about your recent inquiry into the sovereigns that you made in the paper. Can I just confirm your details, please? You confirm the details, right? Magic Goldfish says, check in on the old people in your life, chat. They're really vulnerable to this stuff. Yes, they are. They are. These things target old folks. And then what you do is essentially get this guy by whatever means you can, as long as you don't break the rules and don't break the law, which we'll get into. Whatever means you can, get him onto a proof coin. Because here's the thing, quite often with these coins here, the company is selling them at as a loss leader. Do people know what I mean when I say loss leader? So a loss leader is a product that a company sells in order to get people into the door so that they could be sold other items. Yep. So what loss leader essentially means is that they're, they're selling this at a loss to themselves or, or maybe just at cost price, right? So... So it could be that they've actually paid two hundred and forty nine pounds. Yes. yes, Amazon is a is a loss leader company. Costco's a, oh yeah, Costco's one dollar and fifty cent hot dogs are loss leaders. Exactly. Yes. They know they know that if you walk in to get a hot dog, chances are you're gonna buy something else that's worth more. Or less. They could have paid two hundred and <laughs> Rhodes. Bloons T D six is the pathologic two of tower defense games. No, I'm so, I'm so sorry. No, no. 40 or 230 pound a coin. Sorry, a 260, 270 pound a coin. So they're actually selling it for less than they purchased it for because what they're relying on is the sales team to speak them into buying a more expensive proof coin. Yes, so remember, burger. on the first day of the, the release, say, we're offering this in the paper for 249 pound and we've got a proof coin that we can offer for around 600 pound, say. What? Yeah. So what does that process look like? Yeah. So first of all, what? Yeah, look. Yoda, look, it's you. Look, it's you. Yoda. Hey, she's sniffing around for snacks. She doesn't care. Do you see it's you? Yoda, look, it's you. You're up on the wall. She doesn't get it. She doesn't care. 
the salesperson has to do is they have to explain about what proof coins are. So you have this little script that you use or you come up with or you think of and, and you say, right? So you essentially talk about, first of all, how proof coins are better quality, okay? And then the next stage to the grift is very, very clever. Deviously, horrifically clever, but very clever. Because here's the thing, and we'll come back to this later as well. This isn't a regular... The coin collectible companies are not a like regulated financial service or anything like that. If you go and buy a mortgage or you go and make an actual investment, right? Watch chat. Just watch what's about to happen. I want you to witness what's about to happen, okay? Watch closely. There's an organization called the Financial Conduct Authority, which oversees financial transactions and stuff like that. And there's regulations in place and, you know, you have to you have to adhere to them and stuff like that. Because this isn't an investment. This is like a consumer product, right? This is a collectible coin. that. Standing. The crater, like the prophets once said, and the ashes are all cold now. No more bullets, and the embers are dead. All right, maybe I'll let you out. Maybe. All right, you're free you're going to be selling them and although it sort of hints to it in here we're not selling it as an investment per se we're not like an investment broker or something like that right so what you do is you here's the challenge you have got to convince mr jones looking to put some money aside for his family you have got to convince him that he's better off buying the proof coin right you've got to give you've got to make him think that it's going to be a better investment and it's going to be worth more but you're not allowed to call it an investment you're not allowed to explicitly say the you know the proof coin is a better investment for you it's likely to increase in value uh -oh. you know there's certain things and words and phrases you've got to avoid and the reason for that is because obviously these companies don't want to be regulated if 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 like the financial conduct authority came in and started regulating these coin collection companies right it would be game over. They would have to change significantly. So they've carved out quite a good little niche for themselves where they haven't got that much oversight except for like consumer oversight that you get on all consumer type products, which we'll get to later. Um, but basically they've carved this niche where they're not quite covered by the financial regulations, but they can sort of hint at stuff and maybe make it sound like it's going to increase in value yep. without doing so, right? You can't use the term futures. Let me give you an example of how fluid it was. So when I first started at this company, right, you used to be able to use the phrase future potential, okay? So you could say this coin has got a great future potential, okay? Now, that was fine for a little while. Over the course of time, the legal team basically said, we've reviewed this. We're concerned that the term future potential is too close to investment, so you're not allowed to use it as salespeople anymore. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to use something else. And as you can imagine, the sales team was not happy. The sales team wasn't happy. This so literally check. sounds like the plot of sorry, sorry to bother you. You're getting close. It makes a good point. So check us. Can you um, talk about the previous increases of certain proof coins historically? There must be historic examples of dramatic increases in value. So so this is where it starts to come into the grift on the part of the salesperson. Okay. No problem. And so, bear in so mind, the biscuit. Thanks for coming look, by. I'm not happy with like what I did and the conduct I engaged in while I worked for this company. Okay. I look back on it and I'm ashamed with what I did whilst I was there. Okay. But like, you know. Yeah, it is. It is what it yeah. is. Unfortunately, uh, cell phone I did it at the do time. this all the time. If I could turn back time, I would never have worked there. But I did. I did what I had to do to earn a living. You know, it, it's, you know. But this is where the salespeople, so like the pitch comes in, okay? So the first thing that you would hit them with, and basically, 
you, you would have different sort of avenues. You would have different sort of avenues that you would go down to try and convince them dependent on what their needs were, okay? So for example, there's some people that were just collectors. They were quite rare, like I say, and you, you could convince them sometimes fairly easily to like the proof stuff. Or, and, and on the other side of that, there were people that were like the hardcore investors and were just interested in the gold value. So it was difficult to speak them into it. But Mr. Jones, looking to put some money away for like his family, that, that person is primed. They're, in, they're like putty in your hands, right? Because you can tap into the emotional stuff. You can essentially manipulate them. You can manipulate them emotionally to do what you want to do, which is to buy the proof coin, okay? So you do, you'd use whatever was at your disposal. So Checker, that's one good example of the kind of thing that would be utilized, right? So you would say, um, well, the thing is with the proof coin is that if you look at past proof coins, you can, you can see what happens with them versus these bullion coins. So for example, the bullion coin at this time last year was 279 pounds. Because the value of gold has decreased, that same coin is only selling now with us for 249 pounds, right? However, this coin here from last year, when it first came out, was the same price as this coin, £600. But now we are retailing that coin for £1,200. So its retail value has increased double in the last year. I'm kind of exposing another part of the grift, which I don't want to go into just yet, but we'll get to that. Jack Nicholson says the thing about customer service agents is that they genuinely want to help customers, but 90% of the time they're just not allowed to. They're also not able to just tell you that they can't because the job is like living with a noose on. One fuck up and you could lose it. The whole structure of customer service jobs is beyond disgusting. Yes, I've talked about this. Customer service is, meat, is being a meat shield. I'm not kidding you. Being customer service is managers paying so that they don't have to deal with the shit that they create. I'm not kidding you. Managers know that they're going to create issues with the stuff that they create, and they pay you to absorb the abuse for their part, for, on their behalf. I'm not kidding you, that's just how it works. That's what customer service is all about. Anyway, so essentially what you're, you're usually doing- You're severely disempowered. And, and it starts to intertwine, and you'll see in a sec. But you're, you're, not, you're not talking about like what the real value of something is in terms of like, you know, you bought so, you know, obviously gold, you can track how much it is and how much it's worth and the flow and up and ups and downs and stuff like that. But what you're kind of highlighting is like, well, with these proof coins, they're going to be worth as much as what someone is willing to pay for it. Should we ask to see the manager? Uh, no, they're not going to do anything. They're just going to get irritated and tell you to fuck off. And you're using the term retail value. Which, you know, when I was there, at least, you were allowed to use retail value has increased. Right? So that's the sort of thing you would do. Essentially, you would say... Now that right there, in my opinion, that right there is just fucking... Is, is just... Is, is a con. Like, I think that that's like a, a, like a, a con. You're saying, like, they control the retail value. And you're going, yeah, the retail value increases. Because the company... Your company increases the retail value. That's a meaningless statement. It's so... Oh, it's so bad. It's so scummy. Ever you could... You would... Could, within the rules, to denigrate the idea of buying gold and promote the idea of buying proof. Okay? Good night, that, actually. That was the Thanks whole thing. By. Whatever tool you Happy had at your disposal that wasn't breaking the rules, you would say it to get it done. You tap into their family. If they said no, you'd start putting pressure on them. You do fear of missing out. Oh, there's only so many of these left, you know? We've only got so many in the vault currently. They could be gone. The next batch that comes in might be more expensive. We'll get to that in a sec. Yep. Yep. As friends rest. Yep. You know? Say Bas shenanigans. Demon Mama, how are you so cool? Listen, it's just what happens when you're a... Uh, a that when you're a mother of hell, when you're a mother of many imps, when you're a uh, as uh, you just become more pog. It's just how it goes. This is what happens. Embrace embrace the demon pill. Embrace the uh, demon pink pill that turns you into a trans demon. There you go. Bam. Basically, Solution. any tool at your disposal, you would utilize. Okay. So is everyone with me so far? Is everyone understanding the grift? So you'd purchase large allocation of official mint coins, okay? And then, further from that... 
So you would advertise the bullion. Advertise the bullion. Yeah, sure, just that. Great price. Absolutely. A B a Jimmy. Always be in. Then then press your cell proof. Yep. So but the see, this is this is how it works. This right here kind of tells you. They bring people in with the bouillon, and then you you get you while people are there, you press you you put like you crank up the pressure on them, and they feel like they have to because it gets really awkward. So much, uh, uh, Leah Leah Leaf Stream Leaf Stream the that that's the website chat. So if you want to chit chat on the screen, you want to come on to site onto the website. But yeah, uh, this so much of sales is just learning how to make f people feel super awkward sucks trick is you would you would you'd be expected to do it in a way so you're not really pressuring them but you know it was, it was very pressured it was it was very pressured you know True, it's you, you would be expected you would be expected yeah yeah spitfire sure it's called it upselling in inverted commas that's what it's called in the industry upselling it's called upselling yep, right we called it we called stuff like that but too. really same thing same term you know it's always used like that you want that, listen, you want that old fucker to buy the coin. Because if they buy the bullion, you don't get paid bonus on that. And you get bu you get shit off your boss. If, yes. if you fucking See, that's how it goes. That's another thing that we don't talk about a lot with sales. Um, your managers control you by what they'll do is they will, you will get commission on only certain things. So if you want to make any money at all, you have to sell the shittiest things. You want to know what we made the most fucking commission off of? Um, where I, when I used to work in the industry I used to work in? Fucking GPS units. The highest percentage. Okay, sorry, sorry. The, the highest percentage was car upgrades. So if you could upsell someone into a nicer car, um, a nicer car, that was what you made the most off of. But the second one was GPSs. And it's because the GPSs were all like five years old that they paid a hundred bucks for and they rent them for 30 bucks a trip, 35, 40 bucks a trip. So they incentivize you to push these shitty GPSs on people and you'll they will give you a fuckload of the money if you do that. But you have to push sell people into fucking shitty ass five year old GPS devices it up a lot if, if you don't you know if you have a day without selling coins you get shit off your boss you don't get a bonus you know we'll get into the environment of it later but it's very toxic very hardcore you know typical kind of sales sales office type stuff like you know like boiler room or glen gary glen ross always be closing coffees for closers only that kind of thing it's that yep. sort of environment yeah yeah coffees for yeah closers. it's like you're doing them a favor too yeah i'm doing you a favor anyway look so that's just the that's that's the first um, aspect of that it goes on, however. Yeah, exactly, Eddie. You know what I'm talking about. It goes on, okay? Let me let me let me just It goes on. Okay. So you purchase large allocation of um of the coins and then you pressure sell. And then what you do is you start pressure selling um to people that call in. Now here's where it gets really clever. Here's where it gets really clever, okay? You tried. This is where it really starts to get You tried. Ooh, this is where it starts to get real grifty. So I mentioned earlier about like the retail value of coins going up. Alright. Right? Alright, good one. So here's what happens. So the Raw Mint are still selling this. They've got eight thousand. They've sold some to the companies, like I said, okay? They've sold, they've, sold, they've sold some to like companies and whatnot, and they've got some they're, they're selling to consumers directly. Let me ask you a question. When the Royal Mint directly sell out of this coin, what uh -oh. do you think happens? Uh-oh. So they've got no more coins left to offer consumers. What do you think happens then? Yeah, that's it. You got it. This is where it starts to get really nasty. This is where it starts to get really, really, really nasty. So, these companies, and our company now as well, Westminster Portfolio of Coins, okay? Let's say we've sold out of our thousand, right? 
we've sold 300 at 600 pounds but we then find out that the royal mint has sold out and they can't offer any to consumers anymore so they're no longer able to offer the coin for 580 pounds so what do we do we line go up stonks so we at westminster portfolio coins turn up the heat uh oh we start to turn the heat up okay stonks so as coins sell out at mint we start to turn up the heat this is where they start making crazy money AK the price okay so this this coin that we're selling for now 600 pound raw mint sells out Another 100 on, straight away. 700 quid, bang. As simple as that. As simple as that. As soon as the coins are the mint, 100 pound goes on the price, straight away. In instant, oh, by the way, okay. that is pure profit, just so you know. That is just m money out of thin air. Like that, like fucking that. And then as time goes on. Amphi says, what do you think of the ethics of scam baiting? Uh, I can't commentate on that on YouTube. It get, goes higher and higher. Take so that it for goes what like, it means. You know, I mean, in some cases, it, a coin that originally was sold for 580 quid from the mint, this our company, our company, Westminster Portfolio Coins, as little as six months later, eight months later, could potentially be selling it for double that. Round about double, if not a bit more. Double. They'll fucking double the prices. in On a fucking collectible co oh and they sell it they sell it heavily implied as an investment and they're doubling the fucking price on a coin that's already only priced that high because of its fucking collectible value oh Some it's cases. so bad so a coin that was originally available for 580 pound could easily be being sold for 1200 exactly right exactly magical fish now there's two points to that the first point is that there hasn't there hasn't been it, it, it's it's obviously it's obviously like, it's, it's similar to the ticket thing it's an art it's like an artificial um thing right because the companies have gone and bought thousands of these coins they own thousands of these coins from the mint collectively right they've bought a bunch of this allocation so they've taken coins out of the availability for consumers for their own needs and now they're putting the price up so they've artificially Yep. created this yeah exactly ugly pie yep and that's the other things app i mentioned it earlier i touched on it right i touched on it so i said that you'll press yourself people to call in here's the beauty of the grift here's the beauty of the grift this action here which is in my opinion incredibly unethical essentially just putting the price up after creating um an artificial what's the word like lack scarcity what's the word artificial, artificial scarcity is what he's looking for um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Scarcity. 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 Yes. Yeah. So you, oh, he got so it. You, Woo! Our company, West, Westminster Portfolio Coins, have have created an artificial scarcity. This is also why Bitcoin is so high priced. Big big money banking has a ton of it just squirreled away. Yeah. This is fucking. This is how they do it. This is why I tell people to not fucking lose your head on this shit. Then capitalizing on. Jack Nicholson says. Uh, not only is the scarcity artificial, this kind of manipulation is rife in so many collectible markets and almost anybody can do it. You find some obscure collectible CD game card or figurine and just buy them all up. Wait and then profit. Yep. On that by putting the price up. Scalping. But then do you know what hoarding. we're doing? We're using this to convince people to buy the coin. Yep. It's shocking. It's shocking. So like we'll say... Okay, so um, the reason you want to buy the proof coin is if you look at last year's proof coin, right? It started out at six hundred pounds. We now retail that coin for one thousand one hundred and ninety-nine pounds. Now remember, again, one more time. You will. Ne it is literally you cannot sell it to somebody else at that price. They show the increase in price 
which is their increase. You will never be able to resell that at, uh, at, at that price because that's their price. Its retail value has doubled. We've completely, out of just the desire to make more money, artificially inflated that price ourselves. We just put the price up. You go on the website. The, the, the director goes on. Oh, six, six, 600. Oh, 1,200. Bang. There we go. Done. There's nothing tangible that's happened that really justifies that increase in price. It's literally the companies just artificially creating scarcity and putting the price up. Yep. And then we're using it as a point to sell to the customers as to why they should buy it. Do you see how circular this is and how grifty this is? It's shocking. It's diabolical. It is diabolical. It's that absolutely is the perfect word. diabolical. It sold out from the Royal Mint. Here's what you'd have to. Here's here's what you would say if you were being honest. Okay, it sold out the Royal Mint because we bought thousands of them. Now, not only are we putting the price up, so you have to pay more, but we're going to use that price increase to justify why people should buy it in the future. We're basically ripping you off. What do you think, Mr. Customer? <laughs> hey, how about that? What do you reckon? Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. And here's the thing as well, okay? Here's the, here's the thing. And we'll get into this with the other coins too. But these proof coins that people are buying, even at the price at the Royal Mint, if someone's looking to leave a nest egg in an investment, broadly speaking, this isn't a good way to do it. When you're buying a gold coin and you're paying that much of a premium over the gold price, you are going to have to expect the coin to do magic things for it to be sold for more in the future. Magical thinking. And the thing is, any of these coins we're talking about, will, with, with like a gold bullion coin, right, its value is rooted in the gold. So you can always rely on that. You can always rely on the intrinsic value of gold. Again, placed on it by society, but broadly speaking, that's how it works. You rely on the intrinsic value of gold. With these, you're essentially relying on the idea that people in the future will be willing to pay premiums for these coins. And there are some coins, don't forget, like I said, there are some coins because of their rarity that are worth a lot of money. But there's 8,000 of these. There's 8,000 of this fucking shitty ass coin with a horse on it. Like nobody gives a fuck about this. These things will just become, these things will just dunk in value almost instantly. And certainly, like, buying it at this price maybe is a punt. But if you want to do it for that, but I wouldn't advise it, but, but like, maybe. But when you're, when you're spending twice what it's, what it's retailed for originally, like, eye-watering markups, forget about it. You're just getting ripped off. You're just getting ripped off. Correct. Thank you for that, Perogi. It is, yeah, it's scalping. It's basically, it's basically like a, a you know, a... a, a version of scalping but because there's because there's no regulation and because no one really talks about this ever no there's never any focus paid on it no one ever paid no one ever thinks about this but this is a massive grift this is a massive thing and this yeah and it's uh we're gonna get into the really unethical shit in a just how much a would the salesperson get from selling one of these okay so you get your basic salary which i don't know what everyone's basic salary is but and obviously the bonus scales are different right but depending on how hey, much you sold in a given you. month, you would get paid between, I think, maybe 2 to 5% of the value of the coin. Fun fact. Yeah. Void Era says, at this point, I would learn metallurgy and make my own coin. Fun fact. I knew a, I knew a kid in college. Of, he was well off who did exactly that. He actually minted his own coins. He bought, like, raw gold, minted his own coins, and then sold it to people for a fuckload. I mean, this guy made a fuckload of money doing that. I mean, he had a lot of money to start with because he was like a rich kid. But like he came up with this idea for a, a minting grift and he fucking made a fortune with it. Like this kid made a fucking fortune. Is what you get paid. Uh, so helps that's, to have that's money scaled based on how much you've sold. Right. Yep. Ne he needed startup capital. The company's yeah. raking the rest in. Just just raking it in. 
No, he's not in jail. Uh, he is a bank president. Last I checked. That was a couple years ago. Last I checked, he was a bank president. Like this. Slurping it up. So anyway, that is the first... That is the first part of the group. We're not even... We're only at the first part. Okay, so I just want to ask a question to chat. There are... There Would are you... so many diabolical grifts out there, you have no idea. This is the one. Gimmick coins. Next Here we up. go. This is where it gets really wild. The fucking gimmick coins. We're moving on to stage two. So watch stage two of the uh, of of the grift. So the next stage is this. Okay. And bear in mind, like I'm only touching on I'm touching on the main ones I can sort of come to mind. Yeah, hash but coins. Lots the of hash ways coins. And yeah. Scams and whatnot and aspects to it, but. So the next next one is true. The, K cups are a giant scam. The um unofficial K cups are the biggest bullshit scam you could possibly imagine. Straight up, K cups are hilariously grifty. Do you know how much of a premium you pay to have it in that shitty cup? Literally so much. It's like it's a markup of like three hundred and fifty percent. K cups? I'll show you a K cup. It's this shit. Here, watch. Actually, let's do the math. Oh my god, let's do the math together. So these are K-cups. See this shit? These little thingies? Keurigs. Keurig cups. Okay? Yeah, now watch this. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? We're gonna get what a... What an ounce of coffee costs. Okay. So an ounce of coffee grinds. Let's take a look. We'll get like an interesting one. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Wait. Wait. Cost of coffee coffee by ounce. Let's find out. We'll look at Starbucks because I know they have both. Okay? Hold on. We're going to do this. Uh, okay, these are the ones. Oh, I need to know the bags. Here, we'll look up we'll look it up directly on Safeway. Watch this, we'll figure this out. I'm gonna I wanna do the math here together. Okay? Hold on. Where's the just this? Okay, so here we go. Wait, uh okay. So right now we have K cups, so curing. So, so sorry, sorry. Uh, Starbucks ground coffee is 75 cents an ounce, okay? 75 cents an ounce, okay? Let's do this exact thing, dark roast Sumatra in K-Cup. Hold on. We got to go right back to this website. One second. I will figure this out. Let's see if we can get the exact one. Let's see if we've got it. They've de Oh, my God. They've got them, Okay. So, for the, for the exact same one, here it is. Yeah, here's the dark roast. So, for the dark roast, it is 81, it's 81 cents per cup. So, per K cup is 81 cents, okay? Remember, it was 75 cents an ounce for the coffee beans, and you get 12 ounces, in in the Starbucks coffee K cups, you get 0.44 of an ounce per cup, and they cost 81 cents. So you get half as much coffee for uh six cents more per ounce. Half the cup, half the amount for six cents more. So it's actually over it's more than double the cost. To buy the K-Cup. That's how much you're getting ripped off. Yeah. So it is it is 0.75. And that's for that's for Starbucks. Hold on, hold on. 75 cents.
there you go. Yep. Pour, just go pour over. Just go pour over. Such a ripoff. K-cups are, this is like the um, string cheese thing. The, remember the string cheese thing that I did? We can do the string cheese real quick. Uh, string mozzarella. So people were talking about using string cheese in recipes, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I want, let's look at this. This one's on sale. Let's not get one that's on sale. We'll do the generic brand, okay? Generic brand uh, of string cheese is 37 cents per ounce in string cheese. And if we go to mozzarella, to any level of mozzarella, mozzarella cheese, we can get, wait, what the hell? I just want normal mozzarella cheese. Oh. What the hell? Do they just not have any? What the hell? Here we go. Oh, I was spelling it wrong. <laughs> That's what I get. Okay. Now, let's just get a chunk of mozzarella. Okay? This is a chunk of, like, actual mozzarella cheese. Generic brand. Okay? 28 cents per ounce. For an entire block. Look at that. So there you go. It costs it costs a nine cents per ounce more to have the shitty low quality string cheese. You can literally buy a family sized block of actual mozzarella cheese. Fried mozzarella sticks? Just buy fresh mozzarella and roll it into stick shape. Yeah. yeah, seriously. It'll taste way better. And the thing is, string cheese is is processed in a way that makes it stringier. It doesn't melt well. It doesn't melt well. Yeah, here we go. Let's continue. Official. Yep. Bond approves. Proof. Coin. Grift. Okay. So you need to make this a bit bigger. What was it? 20? Guess 20. Okay, so this is this is this is where it gets good, okay? This is where it starts to get good. This is where it starts to get really good. Oh, this is going to be great. Okay. Okay. So, it is not enough for these companies to just rely on the releases that come from like the official mints, okay? So you, you, you can't just rely, you can't just rely on the Sovereign, the Krugerrand, the Britannia, the Eagle, the Australian Koala, the Canadian Maple Leaf, Be the um, Queen's Beasts was another popular series. You know, you, you cannot just rely on the official um, releases that come from the Mint. They're now following. So... Oh, little little teaser for you. <laughs> so, what do you think? What do you think? So we can't rely on just the official releases. What do you think these companies do in order to ensure they've got plenty of products to offer? What do you think they do? Martin's on the ball. Martin's on the ball. Well, it's quite obvious really. Let's make our own. Hey, we don't need to rely on the mints to make coins. We can make our own. Now, oh, I'm just going to show go. you this advert. Okay. I'm, I'll, I'll, <laughs> oh, no. you know, we'll go through it as we go. There's a couple of features to these coins that are important. So just to, just to introduce it. So what will happen is they will, they will mint. These companies will like mint their own coins or they'll instruct a third party company to mint coins that are like exclusive to their company. Okay. So let's get into this. There now follows a world first gold coin announcement from Hattons of London. Today, Britain faces greater <laughs> political uncertainty than ever before in our lifetime. But whatever the future holds, I feel we have much to celebrate in this great nation of ours. Democracy, enterprise, diversity, innovation, all are cornerstones of life in Britain. Ah yes, Hattons of London. 
To celebrate Britain, a new four-sided gold quarter sovereign coin has been struck for the first time ever. Call now. <laughs> They're literally <laughs> playing the... Celebrating Britain. God save the Queen. <laughs> Someone is just celebrating... Britain. Okay. <laughs> okay, so listen. There's a few There's a few features to these, Okay. And we'll get into we'll get into them all in a bit, but first of all, the coins tend to have quite low mintages. I've seen coins like this minted as low as five hundred, so there's only five hundred that are available in the world. Okay. Also, they tend to be minted associated with like places that have got some renown. So this one is Tristan de Cunha. Who knows what Tristan de Cunha is? Apparently, it's some island somewhere. <laughs> I once told a customer that it was the Queen's favourite place to go for a holiday. <laughs> that is a god tier sales tactic. <laughs> Don't know why I said it, it just came to me in a, in a flash and I said it to a customer. So that's Tristan de Kuna. You've also got ones that are from places like Guernsey and Jersey. <laughs> Here's here's a little thing though. These coins have never seen Tristan de Kuna. Probably not Guernsey <laughs> or Jersey either. They're made by some coin company somewhere. They've just got the rights to mint coins oh for the, this area. Yeah. So the first point is loaded. Yep. Who who guessed the fake coins earlier on? Yep. You didn't even know the beginning of it yet. Tages. Second point minted at like Guernsey or Jersey. Not like an official, you know, UK coin. It's from Guernsey or Jersey, something like that. Okay. Um, now this one is just celebrating Britain okay so I don't know what that's about I'll, I'll be honest I'm a bit I didn't actually know this was just celebrating Britain to be perfectly honest with you um, but normally they're True. made to commemorate what I call like the Boomer Bay events so it's normally for like um, royalty like a royal anniversary or a royal birthday or something like that also what's really popular is they'll, they'll commemorate some combat event, which we'll get to in the next coin, okay? So it'll be oh, to commemorate, like, a World War II battle or World War I battle or the end of World War I or whatever, yeah? Genuine. Uh, this is, like, when they call things a genuine replica. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen, like, those Lord of the Rings genuine replicas? I'm serious. That's a real thing. There's, like, um, it was really popular with Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, where Harry Potter, when the movies came out, they would have, um, they would have these like, uh, like a One Ring, and they would be like, "This is a genuine, re genuine replica of the one that was used in the film," and it's like, I mean, I get what you're trying to say, but like, what the fuck? And the final aspect is that often they will have some sort of weird gimmick. Okay. So as you can see, and this gold quarter sovereign is yours for the just gimmick exactly here. Five pounds. To order, call 0800 954. <laughs> you can see what the gimmick is. <laughs> That's right. It's a square coin. Because why not? <laughs> it's a square coin. Like, because that makes any difference to something. <laughs> a square sovereign. <laughs> No, sovereigns aren't pure. Sovereigns are 22 karat gold. Sovereign is I told you, this shit gold. gets so good. Um, the pure gold coins in the UK are called Britannias. Look at that. A, a square coin. <laughs> okay. So here's, here's, here's what they do. See, un the unofficial proof coin grift. So... Companies make the companies. Companies mint their own, and by mint their own, just to be clear, I mean they'll normally instruct a third party. They're not like mints in the business, but they'll like instruct a third party to do it on their behalf, you know. And they're gimmicky, very gimmicky. That's the key thing here. Okay. Anyway, let's watch the rest of this advert so you can really get a taste of what's going on. All right. 1063. In the corners of this four sided gold coin are the national floral emblems of the four countries of the United oh Kingdom. My God. And at the centre sits the imposing figure <sighs> of Britannia. One of our longest serving coin motives, Britannia has appeared on coins of every monarch since 1672. 
Only 4,999 of these coins have been minted, meaning that fewer than one in every 5,000 UK households may own one. So, sorry, another point to make as well. So the way that this one works, it's not, it's not like the other coins where you sell the bullion coin version and tell them to the proof. They're, this is a proof coin, but they'll, smell, they'll, sm sell, they'll sell the smallest version of it. So in this case, they're selling the quarter sovereign. Now look at the size of it here. It's 14 millimeters in diameter. It's, it's fucking tiny. Okay? True, better than Booyah. It's fucking tiny. True, that shit's good. That's right, Checker. So obviously you're paying a premium. But again, this isn't the product they want to sell you. We'll get to that in a sec. Okay, let's watch the rest of this. Well, I've got one more to, to watch. Ensure your household does not miss out on this distinctive commemoration of Britain. The first four-sided gold quarter sovereign ever. To order, call now. There is a limit of one coin per household at this special price. And your purchase is covered by our 60-day complete satisfaction guarantee. The coin can be yours for just £95. To order, call 0800 954 1063. I love the shitty music <sighs> in the background. I love the fucking MIDI horns. What'd you think? What'd you think? The square, the square sovereign. <sighs> stupid. Honestly, I can, I can assure you that is an absolutely stupid gimmick. Okay? I promise you, as someone that's worked in the industry... So bad. That's a dumb gimmick, all right? Don't waste your money square? on stuff because like that ever. Because fuck you. That's why. <laughs> Don't waste your money on any of this. Anyway, um, so I'm going to show you one more advert because this is uh, the one we're going to dive really into. this really good. Okay, this is the one we're going to dive straight into, all right? Oh, no. Here we go. So check this out. This year, we mark the 80th anniversary. The, the reason I want to show you this one as well is this taps into the commemorative <laughs> aspect Boomer of the bait. war stuff, right? Again, like I say, boomer bait. Boomer bait, Okay. World War One, World War Two, commemorative coins. You got the boomers hooked straight away. Okay, they're literally like picking up the phone, desperate to call in and waste their money. Memory of Dunkirk, one of this nation's bravest hours, and an event that changed the course of the Second World War. Today we face a foe of a different kind, but again Britain has responded with that same Dunkirk spirit. To commemorate the anniversary of Dunkirk, a new world first. <laughs> Coin has been struck. The new coin, a solid 22 karat gold quarter sovereign, has a sandblasted finish carried out with sand from the beaches of Dunkirk. <laughs> this is the first time ever that a quarter sovereign has been produced with this finish. By calling now on 0800 049 9922, you may own this world first gold coin. Sandblasted with the sand from Dunkirk Beach. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? That's the most ridiculous gimmick I've ever heard of. <laughs> oh my god, it's hurting my side from laughing at this. It's so bad. Dunkirk was a disaster. Well, we managed to save a lot. Listen, let's not talk about let's not talk about Dunkirk, okay? The boom, the, it doesn't matter what the boom, the boomers love it, okay? They're eating this up. Oh my god. That's like Bell Delphine bathwater levels. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. It's worse. It's worse than the Gamer Girl bathwater. It's actually worse than Gamer Girl bathwater. At least Gamer Girl bathwater is literally a unique item. It really is. Sandblasted with the sand. I've oh, seen Jesus Christ. I <sighs> Dunker coins. So yeah. Let's watch the rest of the advert anyway. At the introductory price of just £99. The coin depicts the troop ship Royal Daffodil, which, during the evacuations of Dunkirk, rescued over 7,000 of our servicemen, more than any Ooh. other vessel. Only 3,999 of these coins have been produced, meaning that fewer than one in every 6,000 UK households may own one. Applications are limited to one per household. Call without delay to ensure your household does not miss out. The release of this coin will also support SAFA, the Armed Forces Charity, in providing lifelong support for our forces and their families. So to own what? this coin at the introductory price of £99, call now. Your purchase is covered by a 60-day complete satisfaction guarantee and a five-star Trustpilot rating. Call now. Oh, I think the reason why uh, they they say there's 3999 3, is because they don't sell the original. They keep the original as part of theirs. 0800 049 There we go. So that's double that. Nine, I'm going to show you what happens next, okay? Because this is important. Okay. So, 
I see a question in chat. How do they decide what um, how many to mint? I don't know. Throw it a dart at a board, see which number it lands on. I mean, they can literally make as little. Again, this is this is the other aspects of the controller. They can make as little or as many as. Oh my God! True, we should make an Amogus coin. That would make so much money. We could. They we got to target the it's zoomers instead of the boomers. Completely in their hands, like one hundred percent in their hands. Okay, so they they could make loads of these, but it's it's false scarcity. They'll choose to make a certain amount. Here's the thing, though, right? So again, similar upsell path, but slightly different. So you'll have the you'll have Mr. Jones call in. Oh, hello there, Chud. Hello, I've I've seen this uh, advert in the paper for this uh, this Dunkirk coin. Yeah. Is, is it true it's sandblasted with sand from Dunkirk? Yes, yes, it is. It's sandblast. It's sandblast. Yes, correct. Okay. Oh, very nice. I'll take I'll take one of those then, please. Okay. So they've advertised the quarter sovereign. They've called in for the quarter sovereign at ninety nine pound. Here's what happens next. Yeah, what I, have love, I love Jacob Geller. I have a sticker. It's the full sovereign. Okay. Now, if you look at I, this I fucking one, love bearing Jacob in mind I love an official show. proof I love sovereign was five hundred and eighty pounds from the mint. So the full nice. size sovereign of this coin is an eye watering seven hundred and ninety nine pounds. I mean, it's sold out now. It might have been cheaper at the time, but they've got it advertised at the moment for seven hundred and ninety nine pound. That's for the full size sovereign. Okay. The gold in this would be worth, as of today, about three hundred and forty quid. Roughly, <laughs> and they charge you eight hundred quid. <clears throat> oh, and guess God. what? The mintage is lower than the quarter sovereign. Could he make the sus coin? Yeah, I make it from lead. It's a fake coin. Yeah. So I, again, I love that's it. another aspect Sussy. you use. So here's how you do this one. You say, okay, Mister Jones, I see you're interested in the quarter sovereign. Fantastic. Um, just to let you know, do you know how much bigger quarter sovereign is? No, I don't. Oh, it's only the size of a five pence piece. Oh, is that all? Yeah, that's all. <clears throat> Also, also the um, the quarter sovereigns aren't particularly collectible. There's not as much interest in them, which is true. Quarter oh, sovereigns aren't this as, is as so appealing rotten. as the full sovereigns, right? So, so you say, okay, um, look, I tell you what, I've got the full sovereign here, right? It's um, there's only two thousand two. There's only two thousand. There's only twenty twenty that have been made, okay. There's only twenty. There's only twenty twenty that made, so it's much rarer than the quarter sovereign, right? First of all, um, and and yeah, it's much more popular. You know, much more likely to be of interest in the future. And here's the other thing as well, right? So this coin, you've got to understand, this is trash. This is absolute garbage. This coin is so shit. There's some coin dealers that won't even purchase these for the bullion value because they're too hard to sell on. They just don't want their hand in it at all. They won't fucking touch oh, it. Oh, that's so right. They won't fucking touch some of these coins. They're like, fuck that. Even for the gold value, they won't touch it. So they just don't bother, okay? These coins are absolute fucking trash, right? But this is where the grifts start to intertwine, right? So, you've got your own coins, okay? The quarter sovereigns, like we say. Here's what you do. So you advertise you advertise the quarter sovereign. So are you all following how this works? Uh, you advertise the tiny, tiny shit coin, and then you upsell them into the big coin, which you advertise the low cost, and then you talk them up and butter them up through it, and then you convince them into buying the fucking pricey shit. Advertise the Q sovereign. Upsell to full. And also there's sets as well. I don't I don't want to get too confusing with it all, but there's sets too. Like oh my god, it's it's crazy how much fucking garbage you can get. Anyway, so you can let's just keep it simple. So advertise quarter sovereign upsell to full set CTC, okay? Here's here's where it gets real fucking grifty, okay? Oh boy. What some companies will do, right? Remember I said here about how will jack the price of coins up as they sell out and use that as a selling point to new customers. Guess what? That works this way too. So we will take like an official coin, like a sovereign, we'll sell it out at the mint, right? We'll jack, we'll jack the price up. We'll use that as a selling point as to why people should buy it. And then we'll use that to sell this shit like this. 
<laughs> we'll use it to sell shit like this. Buy the commemorative Mama Mold coin today. Bum, 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 bum. Ba -dum -ba -bum. Only 69 of these coins have ever been made. Only one in one million U.S. households may someday own one. Star, star, star. True, 85 degrees. At Darren. least, at the very least, if you buy a coin from the Royal Mint, you know you've got an official Royal Mint coin, right? And it's going to have, even though you, normally you're going to be getting it le less back than you paid for it in, in some many cases, at least you've got the core value of it. It's a Royal Mint coin, you know, it's going to have some sort of desirability somewhere. Not that I'd recommend buying one, but like this is absolute garbage. So, so you know, it's, I it's love like the it's cash like, mama it's like, um, it's so like using the performance of a Ferrari, not quite, but sort of, to justify yeah. buying a Skoda or something like that. Do, do you know what I mean? It's like it's like using something that actually has some prestige what? and using Coin? it to sell a load of junk. And even that in itself is all intertwined with the grift. Yeah fake Yu-Gi-Oh card <laughs> just to get him to buy this shit oh so yeah these coins are just basically super cursed right now here's here's the thing right is it ever worth buying one of these coins I mean my opinion would always be no these are absolute trash okay trash coins the reality of it is is this okay the reality of it is this, right? There is a chance you could make money on these coins, but in order to do so, you'd essentially need to bamboozle someone on eBay, okay? You'd need to put one of these on eBay you need to somebody and hope else. there's some yep. schmuck out there who'll buy it off you for a higher price than you paid for it. You're basically leaving a lot up to chance. But any serious coin dealer, any serious antique dealer, any serious um, auctioneer would just laugh you out of the place if you well they wouldn't laugh you out of the place they'd obviously be kind to you but but they wouldn't you know they'd be like this is trash right yeah essentially you would you, you have to pass the scam on okay so yeah you with these uh, you 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 would be lucky to get the gold value back on them some places will do it you'll get the gold value back and that's it you know, you'd have to be, you know, exceptionally lucky. Well, the value of a sovereign at the moment, if you sold one, bull bullion by post is is gives fairly good prices. Um, but if the gold value of a sovereign at the moment, um, a single sovereign, you're looking at three hundred and three quid, three hundred and three pound twenty pence, and that's based purely on the value of the gold in them. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, that's the, uh, <laughs> again, just to recognize these coins will always be worth as much as someone is willing to pay for them. If it's just the gold value, it's very simple. You look at what the gold value is and work it out from there. But if it's some collectible value, like allegedly, it's very difficult to quantify that. And again, you're relying on whatever someone will be willing to pay for it. So you're leaving a lot up to chance, yeah? <clears throat> anyway. That is the second part of the grift. Okay. There's one last part. Are we ready for the last part? Actually, this one, we can skip this one. We're going to skip this one because everybody knows the old coin grift. Everybody knows the old coin grift, okay? We're not going to watch the old coin grift because everybody knows this one. Basically, there's a bunch of old coins and they will do and they will sell them to you saying that oh it's an old rare coin and they just make up a fucking price off the spot and it might not even be that old or that rare everybody knows that one the first parts are the ones that are fucking wild 